Welcome back to the French Rugby Podcast with me, Tim Groves, ex-Scotland international and adopted Frenchman, Johnny BT, and former France international, Benjamin Kayser. Toulouse and Bordeaux were victorious in the top 14 barrage at the weekend, so we'll be having a chat about those as well as looking ahead to the semi-finals and speaking to a man who will be looking forward to playing in one of those in Nice this weekend. How's things with you two, first of all, though, Benji? Have you graduated again? Since we last spoke, or what's been going on? How many degrees? <laughs> Mate, it's easy. I've, I graduated after matriculation. You know, finally got met, got to do the the real shebang, the um, the real actual thing, which was yeah, it was good fun, but it wasn't as fun because, long story short, you don't graduate with the people around you. You graduate with your college, and because I was a naughty, naughty student, I haven't been spending much time in my college, to be totally honest, and so I barely knew the people. But listen, it's still a great occasion to go to a fantastic city. Have a few pints and I've got a piece of paper now. So it's done and dusted and yes, finally done. A little less than pretty smart buildings you're in as well. You know, the sort of the Ratcliffe Library, which is like the, you know, the traditional one that's on all the postcards and stuff where there's a Sheldonian, which is like a real typical monument opposite from that. And people, if you're in Oxford and walk around, that's where the ceremony is. And you really like it's the Da Vinci Code. You know, it's that type of, of stuff that you're going through and it's pretty special. It sounds like it. There were so many words in there, Johnny, that I didn't understand. <laughs> all, I got, all, all I got was angels and demons. <laughs> yeah, that's I, like, I like those. Pretty much good. Well, you should, I, I, I witnessed the, the most um, thug life sort of type of moment, though, when at the, all the, the whole ceremony is in Latin, right? And they tell you before, they, so as soon as he goes this, you need to bow to this guy, bow to that guy. And then he said something, you need to repeat it. I can't remember what you need to repeat. I was just going, blah, 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 blah. And, um, and, and, they, all the, the ceremonies in Latin. So that you stand up in the reading registry. So that the people who, you know, the proctors and the people who actually give you the, the diplomas. Universitatas. You know, I remember that he said Universitatas a couple of times. And, but they're obviously well, reading. Tatas. And this guy, right. and then this one guy stands up and he's got something in front of him and he puts it down and he starts speaking fluent Latin to everyone. I so good. It was like that is proper gangster style rolling and you know dropping my latin he could have dropped the mic at the end when he was done it would have been the same attitude and he and he smashed it so yeah, i was different different universe different ecosystem there's different Sounds levels of gangster that's oxford gangster that's what that is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah correct how about you johnny how's the hostel gangster i mean it was completely non-gangster i was up in paris uh doing the barrage games for premier sports um so I had a long weekend to myself in Paris, which actually I got some recommendations from Finn. He gave me a couple of sites to go and have a couple of terraces, a couple of beers by myself during the day when I had the days to fill. Um, so I had quite a nice little time to myself. Um, my missus didn't see it that way back home with the kids. She was the, <laughs> the Hossegor gangster this weekend. Um, but no, enjoyed the rugby, enjoyed being up in Paris, looking forward to next weekend, getting down to Nice and doing those games at the stadium. Um and yeah, really excited for it. It's kicking off. Like some of the rugby was phenomenal. And he wasn't on the pitch. So was Finn with you? No. So he, well, again, obviously now that season finished, but he, he was touch and go whether he was going to play. They wanted to give him another week. So if they'd made it through to the semis, he would have played next week. Um, and also Antoine Gibert, who probably would have been started, was out with a hand injury. I'm not sure if you saw when he came on, like his hand looked absolutely in pieces. So it was Vola Vola that started, but the, um, get back to your point Finn and the guys had to go down I think they either flew or got the train down Sunday morning so the plan was to possibly meet up have lunch but it didn't quite happen because he um it was one of those ones that you couldn't get out of it was a compulsory have to go and support the team he didn't want to have lunch with me he wanted to go and support his team so he did <laughs> um and yet disappointing for them obviously and for him on a personal note that's the season finished I don't think it'll be summer touring either um so just rehabbing and I think they'll look to come back next season a little bit stronger because they were disappointing we'll get onto it in a minute but they were they were poor in Bordeaux We'll come on to that one in a second. But Benji, La Rochelle got a couple of late tries against Toulouse, but Toulouse were convincing winners, weren't they? So, And they seem to have the edge over La Rochelle, don't they? Yeah, especially in the first half, I think they... I mean, look, look when Toulouse are on fire, they're no fun. When Toulouse are pissed off, they're no fun. When we're Toulouse are... I've got their, their entire shebang there. Uh, they, they, they really are no fun and they're forced to be reckoned with. I think they had a, a bit of chipping on their shoulder, especially beginning before the game. You could tell, you know, in the press, the players were like, yes, of course, it's it's a big heavy, what is it, what heavy hitter uh, encounter with a bit of European taste. When they say that, they say everything, right? They say, we still have some, some we have some beef with these guys and we're very, very jealous that they that they, that they they won the, the Champions Cup next uh, couple of weeks ago. 
Now, they've been in those shoes all day long. I think Toulouse love nothing more than to, to call themselves outsiders all the time. And whenever somebody comes, they're always praising, oh, Castro number one, Castro untouchable, cast this, cast that. You see, that's what they will be speaking about. And that's what they did with La Rochelle. But the reality is, if you press pause and you look at the game, first 40 minutes, La Rochelle don't even touch the ground. They're getting blown away. But after that, and you can't really blame them. I mean, when I'm looking at the, the, the those games are, 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 are tough. And even the second half, Greg Galdrit was leading the charge and playing well and going for it. And you're like, how many times do they have to do this this season? Oh. It's a lot of minutes. It's a lot. And, you know, for the French team and some high pressure games, I, st I was still exhausted just looking at thinking of his performance in the Champions Cup final against Leinster. <laughs> where he was just a monster of a kid. And so I think they, they hit their limits. Uh, things just didn't click. A hungrier team, you know, you would get the, the easy bounce, you get the easy turnovers, you got those things. And, and Toulouse were the better side. However, however crazy that is, if he kicks the conversion a, four seconds faster, you have one more phase of play. They're within what? Within four points or something like that? There's a chance, so, yeah. So there, there's a chance. And out of relatively nowhere, so a, a bit crazy, um, a bit, um, a, a, a bit, a bit sour. I'm guessing for La Rochelle because they didn't show the same attitude that they had against Leinster. However, if you look at the game, Toulouse are a dominant team. Deserve to go through. Definitely a force to reckon with. They're they're, pe they're peed off. And they were hungry, but they were well rested as well, Johnny. Yeah, but I, I think rest or or not, the, the disappointing piece for Ronan O'Gara was was the manner of it. Like to have the team perform the way they did against Leinster and to dominate them and, and to dominate proceedings and knock them over and become European champions, get that first star on their jersey and then to produce what they did in Toulouse, like that will be the bitter the bitter bit to swallow. And he won't understand that as a coach. Is how, how can this group be capable of going to a European final, becoming kings of Europe, celebrating like that and then just not showing up? Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, Toulouse were fantastic. F physically, they were absolutely superb. The game line, they bossed it. But... La Rochelle, as the team collectively, it was sort of one after the other, even in defense, they didn't know if they were coming up or coming down, that they forgot they were a team. It was really bizarre to watch. And I think that'll be the hard piece for Ronan and his, his coaching staff to digest afterwards. And no cohesion and, and individuality that came out where they've been so good and so structured as a team all year. That's what makes them fantastic alongside the physicality and the set pieces that when they get into multi-phase attack and defense, they're superb. Um, but as I mentioned, like Toulouse were superb. The way they blitzed off the line, they completely nullified Skelton, Antonio. They couldn't get any go-forward ball, and therefore they were just going backwards. Um, and when Toulouse did get their hands on the ball, like Movaka, how he sets up Anton Dupont's first try, like the ability to blend the power and the strength they have with the sort of rugby IQ, the knowing where they are, where their support lines are, the offloads. Like I'm not sure if you saw as well the second try, where they essentially run like a three three scissors in the backfield. Like any other coach would be ripping their hair out and saying, you can't do that. But to lose, it's to lose doing to lose things. And it just sticks and it comes off and they create gaps. The other side of that for Ronan is that's happening and your defense is all over the place. Like you should just come up as a line and shut it down, but they didn't. Um, guilty of overfolding and just trying too hard in isolation in ones and twos. And that was the story of the game. Toulouse at home, far too strong, fired up, as Benji mentioned, defensively on top. And La Rochelle just didn't have the answers. Um, and that's the strange thing at this time of year. You realize knockout rugby, these boys are now on holiday. Like it's too late. You go through this marathon. Nobody wants to be on holiday now. They all want to be in these last couple of games and leading for that top 14 title. But unfortunately for La Rochelle, they just were not good enough on the day. And, and that's what's bizarre. They've been so good all year, but in that barrage, they were very, very poor. And, and it was Ronan that used the word. He said, la honte, c'était honteux. It was shameful. That was how he described it. Those last two tries, you mentioned Benji, got them close towards the end, but over the piece, they'll be really disappointed how they finished their year. And the other game between Bordeaux and Racing was tight for a while, but Bordeaux blew it wide open after halftime. And they three tries in about a quarter of an hour after halftime, Benji? Uh, people need to understand how much emotion gets gets into those games. And well, I'm sure we'll speak about it in, in length afterwards. But that's why I'm, I'm saying Toulouse were peed off. I don't think the quality of rugby was actually really there. Yes, you had some brilliance no. in the tries. But overall, there was a huge amount of, uh, how do you say, dishe, of... Um, Drop uh, balls, handling errors. Yeah. yeah. You, when, you, when you hear fast finale, when you hear knockout rugby in France, it really has a different taste, a different smell about it. And I always remember my, my young coach, we, I, I, as a 14-year-old or whatever, 15-year-old, he would grab a bit of grass. He would get all the boys to smell it. Tu sens là? Tu sens? 
ça sent les phases finales. It smells like knockout rugby. And you know, you know, you knew you knew what you were doing when when that war was about. It's something indescribable, completely ir irrational. Um, sometimes makes zero sense. Probably, probably slightly stupid, slightly bonkers. But that's what the, that's the, the beauty of it. So, so Bordeaux wanted it more. That's my long explanation to say that I think Bordeaux was a bit more pissed off and they wanted it more. That's what showed. Racing, they just I think something's broken a bit. I think they're either tired, the lack of of power that they can't rely on uh, when when the shit hits the fan. Um, And they'll be they'll be disappointed with that. And remember, we had this conversation about how Yannick Nyonga told me that they build the team for their synthetic pitch and for European rugby. Well, at the end of the season, when everybody's knackered and then you have you don't have the particular size that you're trying to to get uh, or to compensate that that lack of fitness and speed, then it, it doesn't pay off. So Bordeaux were pissed off. They went through. I still don't think they're not performing like they were six still six months ago. Toulouse are definitely not performing like they were four months ago. But as soon as they switch it on, they're untouchable. Cast Montpellier, it's 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 going to be random. It's going to be random. It's going to be proper, super physical, uh, bruising encounters. But I have actually no clue who's going to go through. Mate, the weird thing is though, like that, I completely agree. Like the blood, the guts, the desire is there from every side, but it's the control and the fluidity of how do you get that blend of actually playing our rugby that we've played all year whilst being abrasive and physical and bossing it. And like weirdly, that the first half of Bordeaux Racing was exactly how you described. A bloodbath, knock-ons, people just taking the ball and running as hard as they could. The physicality and the attrition was ridiculous, but there was just no cohesion to anything. There was no team aspect to any rugby. The one team that managed to change at halftime was Bordeaux. They came out, they found how they wanted to play. Mathieu Jalibert, Maxime Lucu, the leader, stood up after being massively criticized last week by Urios. And they found their shape. And I think that's the blend that all these teams, like you mentioned, the passion and the desire and the physicality that has to come in knockout rugby. But who can also do that whilst keeping a little bit of shape by applying pressure permanently, by not knocking on the ball with stupid things and just getting, you know, rush of blood to the head. And that's, that's what Bordeaux did. Like, I would say the one team... And Benji, like we've both been there, that always comes good at knockout rugby because it's that type of rugby is cast because it's limited, because it's passion, because it doesn't rely on anything else. It just requires passion and heart and a massive fan base behind you. Like if it goes to that, cast could go on and win this after being, you know, finishing top of the tree with a points difference of 39 points, like not fantastic rugby, but just winning games by blitzing people. Whereas If a Bordeaux turn up to play and they play the way they played in the second half when they went up two or three gears and Racing couldn't live with them, they could go on and win it. As good to lose. If, if they manage to find that blend with the power, the pace, and also the shape that they have to the way they, they play as a team, they could blitz the other sides off the field. I worry for Cast and Montpellier next week. I'm sure we'll get onto that in a minute as well. But Bordeaux, and you mentioned it, Benji, like Racing are set up to play a speedy game on a synthetic pitch. When you're playing away in Bordeaux, And you're coming into our guest who was freakish, the physicality he brought when you're running into Paeva, when you're running in the pack. I mean, they were just brutal. But the blend, once that pack provides a platform and you give the ball to Luku, to Jalibert, who put you in the right areas of the field, gain you that territory, keep a cool head, and then give launch plays that get you on the front foot and create havoc, they were exceptional. And, and that's the difference. The second half, just coming together at halftime, having a little word, right, boys, passion's there but how can we do this a little bit better and that's where I feel if one team mentally and that's where knockout rugby so much of it is mental as well in the top 14 as you mentioned whoever mentally can take these games by the scruff of the neck whilst having that physicality will go on a win next week so huge games of rugby we've lost La Rochelle and Racing but two massive semis to look forward to now Well, Bordeaux did successfully navigate their way through the barrage and into a second successive top 14 semi-final and we can have a chat now with their Australian second row Kane Douglas how you doing? Hey, good, thanks, guys. How are you? We're good. There was a lot said in the build-up to that game, and you were a couple of points down at halftime, even. So, you took the weight, took the game away from them at the start of the second half. What was said at halftime, and who said it? Uh, well, sometimes it's it's good and bad that I can't understand everything. So it's, um, <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, I think I think that from the gist I got, he was quite positive. Where a few games this year we've. Um, Christoph's probably like you know it's been a draw or we're just losing at half time and he's pretty negative and uh, I think sometimes the boys um, drop their heads a bit but um, but yeah he was he was quite he was quite positive and um, we all still knew we 
we were we were pretty good. We we knew like I feel a few times we played wrestling and they've they've sort of got a bit fatigued the second half and I was like everyone was getting fatigued. It was bloody hot and it was a it was a tough game. But um, yeah, I think we just knew we had the legs to to keep on. I mean, this week you've got a six day turnaround. Yeah. massive week ahead of you. It was your hundredth at the weekend. Did you manage to celebrate with a quiet beer with the boys or was it all focused the next week? Um, we had a little midweek barbecue, but it wasn't for, it wasn't celebrating the hundredth at all. Um, and then I buddy, I got, um, I had to do a drug test last night. So I was like, <laughs> I bloody blew everything out of the, like, I couldn't do anything. My, my missus and kids and um, some friends and stuff were waiting at the, the aftermatch function. I, I came out and it was already finished because I, I couldn't pee for a while, and um, there was a few other boys waiting, uh, waiting for a test. So I, um, yeah, I ended up like missing everything. So I've, I had a couple of beers in the waiting for the drug test. <laughs> Tell you pee. Yeah. And did you get picked because you were running around like a superhuman, and they thought that you were on performance enhancing drinks because you were smashing <laughs> boys? Yeah, I don't know. It's actually the first time I've got tested in, in France. So it's, I feel like I used to get tested all the time when I was, but. Um, yeah, it's sort of been good that I haven't, but oh, yeah, it, was, it took a while last month. I was just telling the boys, so the whole mindset of this fast finale thing, there's a people need to have a taste of what it is. And I'm not talking only about Christophe, but just in general. Um, like I was telling the boys, when I was 15, like the, the my coach, you know, would rip a little bit of, of grass off the pitch and he would make every, all the forwards smell it. He's like, si, ça sent, ça sent les phases finales. You could tell it like it smells something different, right? There's a different <laughs> atmosphere. It's just, uh, there's an animal side to it that needs to be brought forward. Any excuses will be used, you know, to point out the opposition. Any excuse will be used at, at getting some animosity out. So, of course, yes, there's, there's, there's something that sort of belongs to Bordeaux, how he sort of bollocks. And, and threw some names out there. Did he do it on purpose because it's the final? Was it useful? Was it this? Was it that? I don't know. All I know is you've been you've been around for the last couple of years now, so you can tell that there's a proper mind shift as soon as the bloody fast final arrive in France. And it's like animal rugby is back on the table, right? Is There's a steak in the middle. Who's going to jump on it and eat, eat it all, all in one gulp? And um, so just w- walk to us through, you know, 14 is already tough, but how do you how do you feel the change and the shift in gears in terms of emotions as soon as it's knockout rugby that rocks up? Oh, definitely. Like, uh, we actually we actually said to ourselves before the Perpignan game, like if we offered, obviously if we had a one that game, it would have been straight into the semi. And um, and the boys were oh, like Christoph was saying, well, this is our quarterfinal. Like we need to win this. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like our team goes better against those bigger those bigger teams anyway. Like I, I feel like we we um, we shot ourselves in the foot last week against Perpignan. We didn't we sort of just prepare or we weren't ready to be physical and um, and then this week because of that he Christoph cracked the shits and I, like I didn't I didn't understand everything that was said in the media, but um, it was sort of like. The boy, we had a meeting and the boys said it was just players meeting like a, um, because Christoph said we're not doing any meetings until Friday so he he normally is very prepared and you have your your meetings and he sticks to like this is what this week is um, this is what Racing do like and he sticks to the same theme the whole week but this week he's like no nah, we're not doing meetings um, you put like a the, the gist I got was that like it's the, the coaches did a good job in preparation of the Burbion and we, we played shit and um, he threw a few names under the bus, and then um, and then the sort of you know the leaders in the group, um, Max Luku, um, Mama, a couple of old heads, um, Francois and, and, and Louis, and that they said like um, we don't agree with what he said. We don't we don't agree with what he said in the media. Um, like you guys are you guys are like our, our best players, and we need you to be confident and, and ready to go come come Sunday. So. Um, yeah, like Christoph actually didn't say too much this week, which was um, yeah, like I get like he, it's it's finals footy and, and that, but we, um, I think it was it was very player driven this week, um, and and I think we know when you when you're playing those big teams, we can actually get up for the game. Where sometimes like we, we've had a few losses this year, we lost to Biritz first round in Biritz, we lost to Perpignan on in Perpignan on like games we we should have won. Um, and then, yeah, and then you roll out a, a good wrestling team and we, and we, we can build them like we, we know we can. Um, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a different week because it was, yeah, it was all player-driven, player meetings. But, um, but yeah, like it was, the boys ripped in last night. That's a massive risk taken by Christoph. And, again, having been coached by him, he's never done that. And I can't get my 
I can't decide if that's petulance by him and he shit the bed, but basically to rip the coaching book up and say, actually, boys, fuck it, just go and do it yourselves in a quarterfinal week is insane. Like yeah. there aren't many coaches, that, it was a big gamble and it's paid off. But again, you've mentioned the senior players like Francois Tranduk, who Benji and I both played with, like great guy, leader, coming to the end of his career, bringing people with him. But to put that amount of pressure on guys like Cameron Walkie, and I get he's international, he's playing phenomenally well, to put that pressure on Mathieu Jalibert, who again is coming back from a four-month injury, is huge. And I'm not sure he understands. To basically almost essentially isolate yourself from the playing group and turn your back on them was a huge risk. And, and so again, what are the types of conversations going on internally? I, I know you maybe won't understand everything, but it's a huge yeah. risk But from him. And again, the perception is, is he aiming to isolate himself? Is it, this is now a massive gambling, like it's, it's paid off, but it could have been a disaster. And like, what would it, what would have happened if you'd lost that game? If he'd basically just said, right, boys, fuck it, go and do whatever you want until Friday. Like it's ludicrous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, like I'm, I'm glad we, we're not in that situation. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like normally he's very, um, he's very planned out. So I don't know if it was like, I feel like, all most of his decisions throughout the, the last few years that I've been here is like um, he you know if like if everything's going well he'll he'll make you he'll make you feel like you like it's not all going well and like he, I feel like he's like he's read a manual on like what you should do and so I don't know I don't know if he's sort of freestyled it or that was like um, that was just another another thing you could do to to make the boys sort of think and do it do it ourselves I'm not sure like whether it was his plan or not, but, um, but yeah, well, it was very risky and I suppose, but, um, but yeah, like it's, it's, it's good. We got, we got the result. And It'd be interesting to see if he keeps on going this week, right? If he, if he doubles up and goes again and, you know, steps back, I would be super surprised, but, yes, if, yeah. but if he does, you know, it'd be good. It could, but you know, just, uh, you mentioned just usually that you went for dinner and stuff with the boys. I remember that with Stade Francais, there was a tradition. All the forwards would go for dinners on the Thursday before final and the menu mate, was foie gras poilé with bananas and stuff. And I think they made yes. it the heaviest, thickest, proper fours orientated thing because the <laughs> idea was to say, as long as you do it together, nothing can break you, right? Yeah. As long as, long as you, you, you take, even if you take that risk together, nothing can break you. And it's probably what was in Christophe's mind. Yes, the risk is, the risk is huge, but w- what's the difference? If you don't create that electroshock and they, you know, play 50-50, whatever happens, you're going to lose. You might as well go full tilt and press, trust the leaders. He, he's, he's pointing at Mathieu Jalibert and Cameron Wauke. He's not pointing at, you know, the little six division sort of back row at number 10. They're like world-class talent now. And they, he knows that they've got the brains or the, the, the balls to back it up, basically. And to add to that, the balls to back it up. But then the next stage is the personal relationship piece, right? So you've got Mathieu Jalibert saying after the game, you know, just to make it clear on Canal Plus, just to make it clear, we don't play for Christoph. We're playing yeah. for the team and the club and ourselves. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> like, so how much of the, like, you, don't, you just don't know like how much players are willing to take in, t- in terms of that public criticism. And I mean, absolutely right. You could try and get people fired up, but I guess there's a way of communicating, there's a way of nudging people, there's a way of probing and managing people. And, and that's the, how much of the personal relationship for these guys now is broken. And Christoph said afterwards, look, I'm the boss. I decide if I want to speak, I speak. If other people want to speak, they can go elsewhere or I'll leave. Like, she you knows it's high tension stuff. So it's just that, again, reading between the lines of language barrier, how much of that did you see during the week in the buildup? A lot or not really? And do you think after the win, relations will be mended and it'll all be fine? Or do you think it's going to be longer lasting issues? Um, yeah, it's hard to say. Like, I, I probably... I I like that I can't read everything and I, I don't and I don't and I don't like reading into the media stuff. So I um it's <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like at the end of the day that he's the coach, he's not the mate. But um but yeah, I don't know. I, I think with, with most things for me with, with Christoph, everything's been quite honest. But um but yeah, I just don't know if whether it's whether it's true or not, whether you whether you throw someone on the bus like that, like with with the translation I got I got from other boys because I didn't I didn't read it myself but yeah like um, yeah I don't know I hope it I hope it um it doesn't cause any friction but and 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 we do have we do have all our meetings this week I've checked the planning we do have our <laughs> so, um, yeah we'll we'll see report back after that but um, <laughs> Cameron Walkie as well as the celebration 
he sort of said there was no smiles in training last week. I know it's serious. It's the it's the fast final, as Benji says. But was it a abnormally tense week? Yeah, I don't know. Like there, apparently there was a there was a some someone. Uh, I probably shouldn't say who, but someone said something to um, Nans and Doobie to um, to rein it in a bit with the with the comedy and the Instagrams a bit. So um, someone quite high in the organisation, and um, and yeah, like there was the there was the like no joking at training comment from Christoph and, and things like that. But oh, I don't know, like I. I find you you got to find funniness and everything. You, you can't just be a boring side like and and, I, and if he had to go at me for smiling or, or joking, like I'd just say that I didn't understand him anyway. So it's like, <laughs> um, you have got quite a lot of jokers in the squad, haven't you? So it, it is about finding that fine balance. And Matthew Jalibe he might not be a massive joker, but he's certainly a relaxed character, yeah. which is obviously pretty different to what we see of Christoph Urias anyway. So aside from this week, which hopefully will blow over and they'll kiss and make up, um, how's their relationship normally? Because they are different characters. Yeah. Well, I, I, I probably don't keep an eye on their their relationship. Like, if, um, but, but no, like, I think it's, I think it's good. Like, like he's, he's a young tan who's, who's playing to nationals who, you know, like that can, sometimes get to your head a bit and you get a bit of an ego and and I like maybe he's had that in the last couple of years but I feel like that's that's sort of come down a bit um he's uh yeah like uh, he's his own person he's he is different he um he is quite relaxed but um yeah well, we just need him to be confident so um whatever whatever the whatever we can do to help that and like uh, I hope um yeah, like what what happens with Christoph and him this week? It can he can stay he can stay confident because he's he plays well when he's bloody confident. So, uh, and we need him to be at his best. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll um we'll see, but yeah, I, th- I think I think it'll be fine at the end of the day. I think they'll, they'll work it out, mate. In any case, it was like a real team performance. Like as a unit, you were absolutely awesome. Whereas Racing were sort of ones and twos and not really collective. So maybe it was the shock you needed, but when you look back at that game, how happy were you with the performance generally across the board? Because it was comprehensive for most areas. We we probably lost a couple of lineouts early and, and things like that, but yeah, like uh, I I feel like when we when we work hard together, um, like a, th- those type of wins like that are, are the best ones. Whether whether you um, the ones where you feel bloody sore at the end of the game and. And I was like, I know there's a few kicks that got put in that I was like, oh, I don't want to chase this. Like it's like another 40, <laughs> 40 meters. I got to run. Like that's just like. Um, but yeah, like f- the feeling you get winning winning those type of games where it's bloody hard is the best. Um, but yeah, we we were we were pretty tight. Um, and I, I think the the boys want to want to do a few things this week to um, have a few more meals together, and we're going to go away Thursday before the game. So. Um, there's a, another couple of chances for that. So, um, yeah, that's that's all we can do. And it's, and it's normally those teams that, that do stick together and, and love each other's company that, that do well. Like, um, so it's, I, I think I think we'll be, we'll be right this week. Did you feel like you were pretty much back to your best? Because the first half of the season went so well. You were playing such good rugby. And then, I mean, it, it was probably combined with the absence of, Jalabert, but you lost sort of 10 or 13 going into the barrage. So uh, could you put your finger on what was going wrong and did it feel like it was corrected? Um, yeah, like there's a, there was a few games we only lost by a couple. Um, that was actually probably good that we, you know, we still got that bonus point lost. But um, yeah, oh, such a long season over here. It's hard to like you, you have your peaks and your troughs and, um, but there was a, there was a quite a big trough there. We lost, I think we lost five or six in a row at home. So, um, and we, we did, we actually did quite well away. We have, I think we had the best record in France for um, away wins this year. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard. Yeah, like you, you lose jelly bears, you lose your um, Guido's out for a bit, like those walk in that are away with the French team. Um, it's, yeah, it, it is pretty tough, but I, um, 
Yeah, I, don't know. I, thought, I think we are. I think we are a tight group, and we are back to back to our best. And we, we know we can do it. We just got to just we just need to do it. And you mentioned a couple of legends that are bowing out at the end of the season: Louis Picamore, Francois Tranduc. Has there been mention of actually winning something and sending these guys off on a massive high as well? Because they're such a big impact on a change room and such good blokes. Yeah, no, there's been chat every week, probably the last four or five weeks about that. So we, um, you know, every well, like in a little team huddle at the end of the training after the coaches walk away, there's there's chat like we want to do it for Louis and Francois, and um, and I, I actually. I actually cleaned Louis out of training about four or five weeks ago when he was, and oh, I don't know if there was someone else involved as well. I don't know, but I felt so shit for the rest of training. Um, it was like it, it was a Tuesday hour, and it just got a bit too heated. And um, and Louis was just stealing ball the whole training session. I just I just went a little bit harder, but I think there was someone else involved as well. And Louis just hit the ground, and he's like swearing, and I was I was feeling so shit. And, uh, you know, the feeling of, like, maybe I'll bloody cost this guy the – he might not play again, like, if we if we don't make the finals or we, or he's or he's done his knee. So, um, yeah, like, it's good to see him back. And, and there is there is chat every week to let's do it for these guys. And, and Louis even came away with us the last couple of games. He was um, – Christoph said he was a, a demi-coach. So the boys were sort of giving him shit that he was maybe on the coach's WhatsApp group <laughs> as well. Um, but, yeah, like it's – those guys, like they're we, – we all look up to them. They've got everything they say. You listen, like, yeah. Um, and, yeah, like it would be awesome to send them off send them off with a, with a title. And a word on Cameron Wocky because we mentioned him a couple of times already. He was called out by Christoph the week before the barrage – he started playing second row for France now, but he's very much a back row for you guys. So I'm interested. Have you taught him everything he knows about playing second row or have you told him to stick to back row? Because that's your uh, shit. No, like I'm, I'm glad that he doesn't play second row for us because I'd probably not be out of the spot. But, um, but yeah, like, uh, no, I don't know. He's, and yeah, maybe the, the French coach tells him what he needs to do. But I feel like when, he, when you watch him play for France, he still plays his own game. He, um, he's just probably got to stay in the middle of the field, but um, yeah, I don't know. He's a, he's a freak. Like he's really strong. He's not. He doesn't go in the gym and lift lots of weights or anything. And um, but he's but he's like phys- Like you look at his body. He's an absolute specimen. Um, big pins on him, and um, and he's like got the biggest. You know the CMJ, the big the the jump test. He's like he's miles ahead of everyone. Um, he's got he has got long arms, but he's pretty springy. Um, yeah, I don't know. He, he's he's a he's a freak, and, and I, like he, I feel like he, he lives to another level when he plays in France too. Like yeah, um, as like as some guys do. Like yeah, um, it wouldn't yeah it wouldn't matter who, who he plays for, he he'd kill it. Um, but um, yeah, no, like I I'm envious of his um, of his raw talent, but I. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's in the back row for us because it, it leaves me with a spot. And mate, with that spot, now 100 caps for the club, which must have been a pretty cool milestone. Um, and this is now your fourth semi in the past two or three seasons, the top 14. So, yeah. A, what did 100 caps for Bordeaux mean to you? And B, what do you need to get over the next hurdle, make it to the final and win this thing? No, no. Getting to 100 means a lot because um, there's guys that have been here for for like um, eight years, nine years who still haven't got there. So it's um, off path. Like, you know, to average 25 a year and, and especially with that COVID year as well, like I only played 20, 21 games that year. So it's, um, it's pretty cool that it's happened so quickly. Um, and like it's, you know, every every year gets easier in France. Like you, you know where things are. You can speak more, and you. So I feel like I am. I've moved to a um, to the south of border, south of Bordeaux, in a little cool little village, and it's um, it's pretty cool. I, I, I walk the kids to school, and you say hello to everyone, and and I feel like the more I've played, and the people see me on TV every week playing, and um, like I, I I feel like I'm at home, and it's. So I feel like I've been, um, I am, I'm quite invested in the area. So I, like, I, it's a, it's a good feeling to, to have done that. And, um, and you're like, you 
people, people like even I was, I was picking the kids up from school today, and there's mums and dads coming over. Good game and congrats, and um, so that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Um, and then, yeah, so we've been. This is a second semi final, top fourteen, but yeah, we we had two semi finals in the in Europe as well. So um, yeah, like I, I think we've, you know, you, they, they say you've got to lose one to win one. So we um, we've lost a couple now. So we'll. Um, no, like I, I think we're, I think we're we're ready to go for this weekend, or we will be um, come the game. But um, yeah, like we, we just need to we need to do the same. Like Montpellier's got a, a big forward pack, so that's where it's going to be won. Um, we, like we know we've got the the backs to do it, but if we don't muscle up, like we we you can't get the job done in top fourteen against anyone really if you don't muscle up. So um, yeah, that'll be that'll be us. So we just need to yeah stick together. Um, hopefully the the other stuff that was had, had that happened last week and they can sort of all be brushed to the side and we can just get on with it. But um, yeah, like I I don't want to have my holidays yet, so I'm I'm pretty keen to to keep going. And it's a long season, but um, yeah, what's what's two more weeks? Plenty of rest this week, Benji. You said it before. It's always a scrap in the playoffs, but Montpellier, Bordeaux, some of the units on show. It's going to be a scrap this weekend. Oh, it's definitely going to be an extremely scrappy thing. I've, you know, everybody's always saying, oh, you know, you could go straight to the semis and stuff. Number of time, mate, have a look at the history books. The number of time where the team who just scraps a last away victory to sneak into top six, wins away, ends up the winning the, 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 the massive thing is just huge. So that week of break, everybody thinks it's a lifesaver. Sometimes it will kill you because you just catch you off pace. And yes, you don't want to have three injuries, you know, in a barrage and then you're missing out with top players. Of course you don't. Of course, everybody would rather have a week off. Look, everybody melt each other in front of your TV and then meet them in the semi. How many teams did we see being caught in the semi, being rested with all their internationals just off pace? And it happens absolutely every year, all the time. And so with your personal story, with the whole Yoyo thing, he just chucked a little bit of oil on the fire with the, the uh, Francois and the Lulu Picamol stopping end of the season. I mean, obviously you only have been here for a while, but they, they are, they, they, they are, how do you say that? They're monsters of generations that, that 95, 96 generations will be forever sort of uh, embedded with those two names uh, because they were also... Well, Francois Trinduc was a 10 when they won the Grand Slam 2010, but they're also that new generation of players just coming through and killing it. And Lulu Picamol, like you said, is a bit of a freak who, uh, who was worldwide known in a moment where the French era was desperately lacking for some uh, worldly renowned players. You know, in, in the world, not a lot of people knew about anybody, but Lulu Picamol, oof, oh, yeah, 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 I remember that one. You know, everybody would sort of shake their heads. So, so no, I think, I think you, you might just catch them off guard. It's going to be, it's going to be one hell of a battle. I, am, I think the, your coach might, 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 might be playing it extremely French, but probably extremely well. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a risky one, but it's, I like it. I kind of like it. I mean, it's, he's playing it the, the way that the, the French top 40 is meant to be played, the proper fashion final way. And apart from the physical side of things, obviously we're chatting very early on in the week meetings to come you'll know more later in the week but from your perspective how do you see it tactically against Montpellier um oh good question um yeah like I I just think shutting down their their big their big second rowers like um and and Zach Mercer and stuff getting his hands free um like that's that's where their game is you know those little offloads the around the ruck type of stuff um so yeah, I think I think for us that'll be the that'll be the one. It'd be good to get our, our mall going, um, and and like from a forwards point of view. But I, but I think we've we've got the backs to do it. Like you, you give the ball to Yoram and and, and um, UJ, um, and like our wingers. Like we um, if we can if we can give them good front foot football, um, that'll be the way to win. I think so. So yeah. Quite, quite a simple, generic rugby sort of, um, sort of. Uh, that's what we're doing. But yeah, I think just you know, like forwards go forward, and then the backs will finish it. So uh, you say keeping it simple, but you mentioned also stopping their big locks. So correct me if I'm wrong, boys. But Vilems is out for the season, season, right? Injured, yeah. But but there's this big, big fella called Chaluro, right? Who's from Toulouse, that big unit with the helmet. Yeah. So I'm yeah. sure you've got him, right? You you've got him in, in your bullseye. 
But how do you shut an opposition of the lock? I mean, you might you just catch him on a driving mall and try trying to break him in pieces. But what else? What else is in the in the tricks books of the old fella? No, I don't know. I, I feel like you know, like before we played um, Bernard the Larue on the weekend, like you see him every ruck. He's trying to the the game before he played Toulon, like he's um, cleaning out from on the side there, just like getting someone on the ground, like you know, being that niggle and. And it's things you can get away with, like uh, within, so playing within the rules, like, um, and you just got to be ready. You got to be ready for that. But you've also, you need to push the limits too without, um, without getting your team penalised and getting any cards. But like um, from a second row, that's like, sometimes I, like, I feel like I had a meeting with Christophe a few weeks ago and um, some of the games I've played middle of the season, I feel like, you know, you look at the end of the game and you go, oh, I didn't really do anything wrong. Um, but maybe like I could have gone and looked for more work. So that's the the little stuff you see those those good locks do, just um, being niggly, just looking for work, looking for it. You need to go search, and if you don't, you yeah, you can stay in the system and go. Oh, I didn't knock the ball on, I didn't miss a tackle, but like, but like you need to you need to be a presence. You need to so um, yeah. I, I like those type of games when you finish the game and go, oh, buddy, you smashed that guy or I ran into that guy. Like, even if you, even if it's not the perfect technique, you know, you just go, I'm just going to car crash this guy. Or, um, as long as you do it legally. But, um, but yeah, like, um, yeah, that's, that's the plan for me, I think. Thanks so much for coming on, Kane. Uh, massive good luck this weekend. And hopefully you'll see a bit more of your coach this week and it'll be all smiles and training. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, won't, be a, won't be a funeral tomorrow anyway. First day back at training. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Kane. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Catch your niece, mate. See you down there. Cheers, guys. Bye. Very interesting. Kane, je ne sais pas, je ne comprends pas. I don't know about yeah, Benji's different for you because you're French, but I think sometimes ignorance is bliss. Like sometimes when you're just thinking about your job and doing well, because that's what he's been doing. He has been awesome to watch on the field like he's one of the best second rows in the top 14 but sometimes the off-field stuff the media the distraction the sort of circus element sometimes it's best just to park it and not not watch it not read it and if you can't read rugby rama or media olympique because you don't read french it's maybe a blessing all i know is that bastian chaliro better put you know double sets of shoulder pads or triple sets of headgears because every rock is going to try car crashing into him that's that's what i heard um no man i I think the team is 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 rich when when it's diverse, right? So you need the angry Mathieu Jalibert who's going to get picked on and stand up. And I think Louis Picamol, I know for a fact because I've been in teams with him, he is the guy that you want in, in your change room when stuff like that happens because he's the guy who's got a big sack of nuts and will stand up and be right. This is not acceptable. And there's nothing better than a teammate standing up for you. There's nothing better than a young Cameroon Woki and a young Mathieu Jalibert, however good they are, to be backed by the old dogs who are like, boys, listen, Exactly what he said. You're top players. We trust you. If he wants to bollock you, that's his problem. We trust you. We need you. Let's do this together. Mate, that's the ideal motivation that's, that's, that's behind it. And that, that's extremely useful. So I think they will use that. They will go through it. And he, if Kane doesn't understand everything, he'll just go about his job. And that's diversity of profile is what you need. The brain, the reactive, but also just the, how do you say that? The piano pushers, you know, let me do the thinking, you do the pushing and the car crashing. And I'll do the rest. And Christopher Arias, the man behind this storm, whether it's a media storm, a real storm, whether it's a master stroke, a mistake, Johnny, you know him. You mentioned with Kane there, he's not done this kind of thing before. It's a big risk at this time of the season. But it's easy to forget that he arrived in 2019 and Bordeaux had finished 11th, 10th a couple of times before that. Oh, All of a sudden mate. they're making semifinals. He's done a hell of a job. So mate, he can me- afford to risk it. Well, yes and no. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. He, he, he's superb and he was great to work with. He was fantastic with me as well. I love playing for him. But you look back at the, the job he did at Oyonnax. Like he took Oyonnax from Pro De Deux to Champions Cup Rugby with a shoestring budget, like nothing there. Like that is like waving a wands type stuff. Then with Cast again, came to us. I think we were 12th. Like we just missed relegation straight back into top six. So like, don't get me wrong. The rugby, the template, the culture, the environment he sets, it's top class. It's one of the best that I experienced in France and I really enjoyed him as a coach, but not speaking to your players until Friday before a quarterfinals, a different kettle of fish. Like I've never heard that before. Um, 
and I still can't decide if it was a master stroke or if, again, in the terms of manipulation in the background stuff, if he didn't have the Francois Tranducs and the Louis Picamols in the background to pick everyone up, I'm not sure how it would have went. And I think there's a lot to be said for those experienced guys who would have been heroes for, like, Mathieu Jalibre would have looked up to Francois Tranduc as a young kid and watched him play. So I think there's also luck about the makeup of the squad and who they were there, the players they had there to pick the team up after that defeat to Perpignan, which wasn't the end of the world. You know, Perpignan were scrapping for their lives. Um, but it's paid off. They live, there's another week, they're into the semis, another week of rugby, they'll be back to their normal prep. You've got to think relationships are going to be meant or mended during this week. Um, but yeah, it was a huge risk. And I'm not sure many other coaches or any coaches that I've had would have done the same thing. Um, but it's paid off. Well, we've spoken about both barrage games now. So it's about time we found out what our meter moment of the week is. What have you got for us, Johnny? It comes from the playoff game, mate. The Ooh. first time that a top 14 side has ever won the playoff game and not lost to a side from Pro Day Do. Perpignan beating Monomarsan at the weekend at Monomarsan, where they hadn't lost a game for the entire season. They were unbeaten all year. So USAP staying up, the Catalans making it another year in the top 14, winning that playoff game. Pula Fasalele, Tristan Tedder, and Mathieu Asabez. We saw some of the celebrations after the game, which looked absolutely epic. Um, but for me, the meter moment of the week is them retaining their place in the top 14 after finishing 13th, which has never been done before. A first in top 14 rugby, so well done to them. And they didn't just edge it, Benji. They won it convincingly. Proper. And they won it convincingly after beating Bordeaux at home uh, you know, to make sure that that Breve couldn't, couldn't turn it. Well, that's what they thought, but that Breve couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get them in, in a, more trouble. So th- I don't know if you remember, but I think the coach of Perpignan, what's his name? He, he came out about, you know, being particularly pissed off because they thought they did the whole ticket by beating Bordeaux at home. And then they were like, right, well, Stade Francais should have a look at, at the way that we play because we play with heart on our sleeves and we play with passion and we play with a bit of self-pride. Uh, and they still backed it up in a really, really complicated way. So, no, I think, I think you could have spoken about the general overall performance of Toulouse and the way that they stepped up. You could perform, speak about your meter moment of, of the week is obviously Wookie and Wookie scoring and celebrating on Mathieu Jalibert having the balls to stand up to Christophe Ois at the end. But just for the celebration of Acebes, who I saw at the end, was basically giving the program of Perpignan, saying, tonight, <laughs> Perpignan. Tomorrow, Barcelona. Thursday, yes. Friday, Ibiza. Boom! And everybody was super happy. And I know my mate, Damien Schuli, is going to be absolutely leading the charge for his last minutes as, as a Perpignan player before he becomes, I reckon, a pretty sensational coach. Um, and, and we wish him all the best. I think he, he got a lot of love. A lot of players got a lot of love. I didn't get that much love. Maybe because I wasn't as good as all of them. <laughs> but there's... There's a ton of quality players that are retiring at the end of the season. Max Medard, Joe Tecori, Guillaume Girardot, Louis Picamol, François Trinduc, Damien Chouli is all the way up there with them. Um, a proper legend of a bloke. A super, a lad's lad, right? You always need a lad in the change room who's going to take care of the boys. Social captain by a mile. Um, I think the only, the only regret probably in his career is not playing with the, the British Babas. Oh my, he would have fitted like a glove. That's is exactly he free this weekend? Standard. No, well, I don't he's think Ibiza, so. Mate. He's in a beef, mate. He's in a Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think he's going to go. Priorities. Yeah, no, so meet the moment of the week because it's going to be hot, hot in Perpignan, Barcelona, Ibiza, and Ibiza again. Well, well deserved. Perpignan played with a big set of cojones and did extremely well to, uh, to get themselves out of a very troubled situation because when this new rule was put in place, I was like, there's no chance in the world that the Pro de Deux team who loses the final, who loses, is going to back it up by, you know, beating a top 14 team. And like Johnny said, it's the first time in history that they don't. So it's a, it's, it's a huge, huge victory for Perpignan. There we go. That was Benji and Johnny's meter moment of the week. And meter is the world's number one wireless meat thermometer. Recently making over 11 million cooks better with their game-changing app and completely wireless Bluetooth meat probe. You can use it on a barbecue, in the oven, or in a pan. And you can get your hands on one at meter.com. Plus, you can now get 20% off any full-price item all you have to do is enter the code FrenchPod20. That's FrenchPod20 at checkout, and you'll get 20% off any full price item at meter.com. Right, we'll have a quick look ahead to the top 14 semifinals shortly. But if you need any beers with your meat, we've got some, haven't we, Johnny? We do, mate. And these are now easily my weekday beer. Effectively every <laughs> single night now. A couple whilst cooking, no hangover is the deal sealer for me. So if you're watching rugby, 
having a summer barbie um this beer is a beer for all occasions and get yourself an order because it's top drawer Yep, Days is a new breed of alcohol-free beer created for those who want to do more. Proudly brewed in Johnny's native Scotland using locally sourced ingredients, their beers are 0.0% ABV and low calorie. And they're now B Corp certified company committing 2% of all sales to charities that empower fresh thinking towards mental health. Breed for good times, good days and good tomorrows. You can enjoy all the great moments associated with a cold beer just without the side effects. And with over 700 five-star reviews, it tastes great too. So just head over to daysbrewing.com and use the code RugbyPass15 to get 15% off a case. So if the barrage were big, semi-final time. Cast to lose. What's happening, Benji? Uh, no, I, I see Toulouse just slipping away with it. Very, very tough encounter. I think the only reason why Toulouse will be will not fall into the trap of of taking them taking it for granted is because it's it's a sort of a derby right it's that there's there's about 85 kilometers between between Castres and between Toulouse it is the big rivalry um it's it's the town against uh, you know it's against la, la, la Garonne it's going to be it's going to be a proper monster fight of it and i know Toulouse for a fact they will have posters and posters of the official charts Cast number one. Oh, we're only going to the top of the league. <laughs> we're going to the top of the league. They're much better. They're much better. And they'll play that music all day long. And like they'll get the old recipe book of Guinness out. And because they're not missing that many players, I just don't see Cast um, being able to, to just, yeah, to take over all that power. However, it's not a convincing victory. It will be a three-point victory. But I, I see Toulouse winning convincingly 16-13 against Cast. Winning convincingly by three points. Um, <laughs> um, oh, man, I kind of see it the same way. And it goes back to your point that you brought up earlier, Benji. I think it's easier to keep the momentum and have played a game and be in confidence and to have won convincingly. Like both sides that had home barrage won convincingly. They absolutely destroyed the opposition. I think also mentally, that's hard for Cast and for Montpellier sitting at home and watching a side be ultra dominant against the La Rochelle, for instance, and knowing you've got them next. Um, and I agree, I just think Toulouse, and again, we've already seen Ugo Mola come out and say that we're playing the number one team in the league. This is a massive game for us. It's a big step up. Like They know they're capable of when they want to mix it, when they step up, when it clicks for them, when they get that level of brute physicality with the guile and the organization that they have, they're as good as anyone in Europe. It hasn't quite clicked for them this year, but they're defending the top 14 title. Um, and I just think, like, I've seen the prep as well. I've chatted to mates in the cast camp. It's a huge week for them. The training week they've had as well, the entire town has been out. They've had, like, training sessions with the entire town there. Like, you guys don't understand how many people have been there and how much this means to the cast. But I just think Toulouse have that little flick of something extra, that little bit of X factor that maybe will be the difference. That being said, like, the cast, the brutality, the love they have for top 14 rugby, if it descends into the bloodbath and just physicality and who wants it more, cast are more than able to, to overturn to lose. And does that mean you're picking Bordeaux to beat Montpellier as well? Not having yeah. had a week off. Yeah, same, the same principle. I just think as well, like Kane talked about the, the, the matchups. I think that Valencia not being there is a massive miss for them. I'm not sure if Mohamed Huas is going to be fit. Kobus Reinach also isn't there. Um, and I just think those are a couple of key positions at knockout time. You need that control with the blend of aggression. Um, so they're a little bit short. That being said, they've been great across the board. Knockout rugby, though, we know Montpellier, they've never quite been to this stage and kicked on and won. Neither of Bordeaux, but for me, I think Bordeaux look more ready, having watched that game against Racing. The way at halftime, they chose to insert their brain back into their skulls and activate. When you look at Luku, Jalibert, Moifana, Soutini, when those guys click after your boys like Kane give them the platform, they are dangerous. And they've been there. And as Kane said, they've been to semis multiple times now. I think this might be their moment to go one step further and reach a final. I, I agree with that. I think a full tilt Montpellier would be would be very problematic. Tiny bit more experience. I think overall, if Bordeaux had lost in the barrage or losing the semi, it would be a super disappointing season for them. How many times have we been spoke, speaking about this, right? They were top of the league. When, when was it? Two, week, two years ago, pandemic hits, no more top 14, blah, 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 blah. You know, up, down, up, down. They feel that they've been robbed a little bit from something. And I think that book is still hasn't been closed completely. Montpellier, listen, let's face it. They, they were delighted to be top of, of the league. They were delighted to, uh, 
to to do well in Challenge Cup last year. And then they got, you know, out of nowhere, they got out in, in Champions Cup. And I think they're super happy to be qualified already. If they lose against Bordeaux, it will be a big disappointment, don't get me wrong, especially for the boys who stop. But it's still a good season. You know, if, if, you, if you press pause and you realize what they've done, it's still a good season. They qualified, they lost in the semi. All right, all right. it's disappointing. It's still a good season. So I have a feeling that they that Bordeaux need it, want it, are hungry or a little bit for it. And that again, that pays off in those, in those crucial moments. So against the super dominant Montpellier full tilt side, it would have been too much. In those conditions, yeah, I, I see Bordeaux sneaking it too. Thanks, Benji. Thanks, Johnny. A big thanks to Kane Douglas for joining us as well. And thanks to all you guys for listening. Make sure you hit subscribe. Leave us a nice review if you can as well. Check us out on Rugby Pass and on YouTube. And we'll be back with another episode next week. Au revoir, guys. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Bye.